I think in the continuing investigation of this, it's going to be very important to highlight the inconsistencies from the U.S. Navy. Real quick, from my time in intelligence, at that time, there were basically two sources. You had human intelligence and you had signals or electronic intelligence. Each had its good side and its bad side. The good side of human intelligence was is that you could direct the conversation to things that you were interested in. You may or may not get the truth about it, but you would know that the topic being discussed is exactly what you're looking for. Signals intelligence? Very, very unlikely that if those being spied upon don't know they're being spied upon, that they're going to be lying. So the information's good. It just may not be what you're looking for. So that's why you have to have analysts to put everything together. So this is an article from 30 June. We covered this a long time ago about when the Navy realized that there was a problem. There was a huge problem, and what happened wasn't an accident, and they needed to keep it quiet. This is 12 days after the interview, excuse me, the press conference with Admiral O'Coin, and we're going to go there real quick just to show that two separate times he said this. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm not going to speculate uh, on uh, what happened, you know, uh, but it will be a full and thorough investigation. Uh, but for me to say uh, what happened at 2.20 in the morning yesterday, uh, unknown. Uh, so we're, we're going to appoint a flag officer. We're going to cooperate with all the stakeholders in this, uh, especially the Japanese, uh, but uh, we will, uh, we'll, we'll get those answers. I, I don't have them right now. Okay, that's the first time, and here's also the second time that he actually reports the wrong time for the collision, or at least the wrong time as now reported by the Navy. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump up to 16 minutes here and show you the second time he makes this commitment. Right here, Kyoto, Toshi. English or Japanese, whatever you want. I'm not, uh, there will be a number of investigations. I know under my authority, I'm going to do a JAGMAN investigation. That's a Judge Advocate General uh, manual investigation and an appoint a flag officer. There's at least two other investigations, and of course we want to cooperate with the Japanese if they uh, want to do an investigation. We will we will work hand in hand with our ja Japanese partners. And you might allow the uh, you might allow Japanese folks to interview some sailors. Yes, we will cooperate fully. Okay, so there you go. Two separate times, he even says that they'll give them access to the crew in those two in, in those two different occasions right there. And this man isn't some random low-level person who doesn't have authority to speak at this time. He was the commander of the 7th Fleet. And this is what, at this time, he said was going to be this, the procedure they were going to follow. And then... 30 June, the U.S. now exercises sovereignty rights and not only bars the Japanese, they bar the Filipinos from investigating as well and say no access to any of the crew. Now, also, in this, here is an article, and this is important because this is from 19 June. Okay, when anyone with a thinking brain was like, why did it take an hour to report this? This idea that, oh, well, it was an accident and there were people that were confused. You can walk and chew gum at the same time. I, I'm sorry, there's 300 people aboard that vessel. Yes, you had a lot of people doing damage control, but 45 minutes to get on the horn to anyone, especially when 
everyone had cell phones. And we had this report of a kid below decks that was actually able to call his dad, but nobody called the Seventh Fleet. And then no one injured aboard the other vessel. And now we know for a fact that they weren't asleep, that it wasn't on autopilot because the skipper of the cargo ship, and apologies for the uh, delay here. And this is from 18 June, said that he was attempting to contact them 10 minutes prior and was flashing his lights at them. And that is down here. And also said, we were sailing in the same direction as the U.S. destroyer was and then collided. So, you have so many different things that are completely inconsistent. There's no way this guy would have lied if he was innocent. If this wasn't an attack. And then we have this reporting issue that the Japanese, and this is once again 19 June, each country is leading its own investigation of the crash and neither would speculate who might be at fault. Location tracking data shows it made a sudden U-turn at about 1.30. We can show and prove that's false. This is around the time the Japanese Coast Guard said the vessel collided with the U.S. destroyer. The ship then made another U-turn an hour later. That's also false. About the time it reported the collision and circled back toward the site of the crash. And then the ship's operator, NYK, agrees with the timeline of events, all provably false by AIS. I mean, not even close. I mean, these, these aren't estimations. I mean, they were they had the, the track of that up and visible for the public to see literally the day after. And we've watched it ad nauseum, and we're going to watch it again. So, um, sorry about the blurry, but this is 0132 hours local time. This would be about 90 seconds after the collision. Um, once again, that little white island right there represents one quarter mile, not from the accident, but itself. This length is one quarter mile. So when you see these tracks and you see the distances, you can use that white island to give you reference of distances traveled in time. So we're going to head and go forward here. 135. I don't see any U-turn at 130, anything remotely like a U-turn at 130. I see a gentle right turn, another right turn, two left turns, and now another gentle... Now remember, the captain said he was on the bridge and attempting to contact the Chris, Crystal, excuse me, the Fitzgerald, at this time. Okay, so look at these distances traveled. The size of that island, just to give you reference, I measured it. These little icons that they're using for the ships, now I'm not saying the ships themselves are this size, are about half that size. So here we are at, okay, here's its second turn, okay? This would be 206. So they were talking about U-turns happening at 130 and 230. Not, not even close. Not even close. And this thing does a full 180 degree turn here in about seven minutes from 14 knots after having collided with a 9,000 ton destroyer. So they reported, and this was from the Japanese report, that they said they received a phone call. The Coast Guard did at 225 from the crew of the ACX Crystal stating that it just happened, so they randomly assigned the collision time of 0220 hours. Coincidentally, the Navy now says they received a cellular phone call from a crew member at 0215 hours, stating that this had happened then. Now, that's just way too much of a stinking coincidence. Okay, now I went ahead and stopped this. This is a little bit late, but this is, and I'm sorry about this being all jumbled. I don't know why it is. But so this would be 0230 hours. This would be five minutes after the reported time, excuse me, 10 minutes after the call from the crystal and 15 minutes after the call from the um, Fitzgerald. Sorry about that. So once again, the times are completely wrong. And then the most damning thing, we're showing this completely unbelievable track by this giant cargo vessel. So this thing has been able to go downrange 
and come back in one hour, make that giant turn, and anybody who's seen one of these vessels move, even at 14 knots, knows that there's no way it tracks this amount of time, it, this, this distance in that time, given what we know about the size of that island and the distance traveled here. And then we see this. Okay, this is 41, 143. And just to show, somebody's like, well, it's an issue with the reporting and the AIS track. It's making it jerky. It, it's not. Other ships are moving around while this thing is sitting here, completely motionless. And then this nonsense, where it does a left-hand turn and does a giant, almost a full 180, over 180 degree turn at this location. The Navy saying that the ship, the Fitzgerald, was running 190, which makes more, less sense for everything involved. So it, we just today we had to go over how this was being reported at the time, and now in context of the report that they have that's saying the official record of events makes literally no sense. We have an admiral that said that they were going to cooperate fully, which would have made sense if at that time they thought this was just an accident, just like they did with the porter. We showed the videos of that, how with the, the porter, they gave the media access to a guy who was aboard and a high-ranking officer that was in charge, and let them speak freely about the issue with the porter and the Ottawa's on. And that was in a very, very uh, contested area, the Straits of Hormuz. We have a lot of enemies over there. But, you know, they released the audio of the bridge where you could literally hear the argument between the guys, but that's how the Navy would act when it's an accident, when it's clearly just an issue of the guys on board not knowing what they're doing or not uh, executing properly. That's what they do. Because the military are our servants. They, you know, they work with, with our money. And, but when it's not that, you see changes like this. You see people saying one thing and doing another. You see electronics intelligence not agreeing with human intelligence. You see the two things conflicting. And you see different humans telling different stories at different times. And you see people lying that have no reason to lie. And that's, that's pretty much the nutshell of this video to show how signals intelligence versus electronics intelligence, or excuse me, versus human intelligence can point you in the direction that you need to go. Without giving you the complete picture, you can know that the story being cooked up ain't what really happened. So anyway, 13 minutes. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone, for the support. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.